very, really warm welcome to this week's masterclass. I'm just going to change this actually. This um, I've just realised that this is up from last week. Ooh, that's just made me bigger. <laughs> well, welcome to this week's masterclass, which is all about how you can overcome the fear of failure. And we've all had it, haven't we? We've all had that fear that something's going to go wrong based probably on something that has gone wrong in the past. And it can be absolutely, it can just stop us in our tracks, which is not very helpful when you're looking to grow your brilliant business, especially when you're looking to scale your business as well. So today we're going to actually unpack, you know, what is what is failure? What is it all about? And how can you actually turn it around so that I, you start to use failure as a really important tool in your business? So I decided to give you the correct definition of failure. So I looked it up in the dictionary and it came back with this. Failure means a lack of success. That's it. That's all it is with regard to, is that feeling of not being successful. And I can definitely remember a time in my business early on like I didn't even want to tell people that I was setting up in business because I was so worried that by telling people it actually meant I had to go out there and be an immediate success. So I just wondered if anybody resonated with that idea that you couldn't actually go out there and tell people about something that you were so excited to actually be doing. And that it's a fear, it, you know, it's this inbuilt fear of being perceived as a failure and we are taught from a really really young age that this is a really bad thing in fact I was listening to a podcast with Mel Robbins um, on Fern Cotton's Happy Place podcast last night and she was saying that it's between the ages of 8 and 12 I think where children begin to see the difference if they're different in a classroom. So if they're in a traditional classroom um, situation and they can see if they're exceeding or struggling in that setting, that they can start to determine if they're a success or not. And I thought that was really interesting because it actually took me back to when I was between the ages of eight and 13. And, you know, these are like times when even now I can think about times during like was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, when there were diff definitely times when I tried different things and I didn't succeed and I definitely didn't keep on trying. I would try it once or twice and then if something felt really hard or I had this kind of like burning embarrassment that I was trying something that I wasn't very good at, such as sport, I wasn't very sporty at school, I would actually stop doing it. I didn't have that robustness within me to keep on going. And it's exactly the same when you're running a business as well, is that we get so excited about running a business, we come online and we see all these people doing business so brilliantly, so perfectly. And immediately we begin to project that we have to run our businesses in that way in order to generate success. And we determine that our level of success has to look like somebody else's. And that's just how a human mind is actually programmed. And instead of being inspirational or motivational, these things can actually be um, like, they can be a massive barrier to you going out there in your business, trying new things. And that's kind of what you need to do in business. You need to, just like anything, anything that you're learning new for the first time, you have to keep going out there and trying new things. If you continue to sit in your place of comfort, if there's no discomfort in your day, 
you're actually not growing. So that's something I want you to think about is your actual day, how much comfort are you in? And if you're like, actually, Rachel, I'm in so much comfort, it's untrue, then ask yourself if you're actually growing. And it's highly possible that you're not. And it's because we're told and we program ourselves to not feel that level of discomfort, to not feel that level of embarrassment or uncertainty. And our mind tells us that it's not safe for you to be in those places. And we can actually physically feel that fear of failure. We can, it's not just something that we have in our mind, but we can actually feel it in our bodies as well. And it's not a pleasant feeling at all, is it? That fear of failure, that, that feeling of fear, you know, I don't know about you, but I can sometimes feel it in my throat. I can sometimes feel it in my chest. And it's the most excruciating, uncomfortable feeling possible. And as human beings, we do everything we can to actually steer ourselves away from any unpleasant feelings. But when you're in business, let's go back to that. When you're in business, you need to have a level of discomfort every single day in your business. Now, I'm not saying that 100% of your working day has to be in discomfort, but there has to be an, an element where you are pushing yourself like 1%. And this is what I, something I say to my clients all the time is, when you're looking to grow your business, it's really about going out there and just pushing yourself. And pushing is such a masculine word, actually, isn't it? It's, it's like almost like having a dance, being playful with your business and trying things that are like 1% out of your comfort zone. And when you actually create that as a daily habit, that 1% over a week becomes 5%. And then the second week, it's 10%. And the third week, it's 30%. And within a really short period of time, I'm sure you can do the sums, you will discover that you have taken yourself out of your comfort zone and created change. And I've got some steps in a few minutes that I'm going to share with you to help you through this because it's all well and good listening to all this like content and getting really fired up. But sometimes it, it's not enough. Actually, what needs to happen is like you need to flick the switch in your mind. Now, the other thing is um, Brené Brown is so good at talking about the power of failure. And her big thing about failure is actually it's essential for us as human beings. It's essential because it allows us to grow. So very much linked back to what I've just said. So if you think about, um, you know, I, it's my son's 15th birthday today. So I'm just thinking about him learning all these things that he's had to learn in the 15 years that he's been on the planet. And watching him learn to walk, he didn't just one day uh, get up and move forward and, and walk. He fell down more times than he, he took steps. But then eventually he got to the level where he could stand up. And then he'd start to take some steps forward and he'd fall down. He didn't stop. He carried on because his, his brain was hardwired at that time just to keep on learning. And as I said, you know, the, the information that Mel was sharing in her podcast um, is that between 8 and 13, you, you, you lose that feeling that it's safe for you to keep moving forward by um, having failure, by embracing failure. And, and Brené Brown is all about embracing failure and seeing failure actually um, like the steps to success. And again, one of the things that I get my members of the 5K Club to do every single week is to first of all set that intention at the beginning of the week like what are the you know what are the goals that you're going to actually achieve in in your week moving forward and then at the end of the week it's like right what has worked really brilliant because I'm all about celebrating those big wins those little wins just celebrating and saying well bloody done you're still here in the game but I also get them to have a look at the things that haven't worked well as well and that's because there are there are the kind of ingredients in there 
that when you start to extract them, you will begin to see the areas where you need to grow, the lessons that you can take from that experience that hasn't gone particularly well, that you can apply next time. So instead of seeing failure as this thing that stops you, it's starting to see failure as this thing that allows you to grow. And as human beings, we are all hard, hard wired. We are so hard wired to do things on autopilot. So let's just say, for example, at the beginning of this video, it didn't start off very well. I still haven't figured out that the bit down below is, is incorrect and I had a bit of faffing about. And in my head, I could have started having a really hard time with myself saying, Rachel, you've really copped this up. You're supposed to be coming on here looking like a professional and you don't, blah, 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 blah. But I didn't. It's kind of like this, this is the power of fear and this is the power of failure is that if you allow it, it will pull you off track. But if you quiet down that voice that is actually trying to keep you safe, like, you know, my voice would have been like, get off the live stream, you're messing it up, you're looking like an idiot. So it's trying to protect me. But actually, in reality, I know that it doesn't matter that the first 30 seconds, the first 30 seconds were a bit faffy, because actually, we get there in the end. And next time I use um, StreamYard, as I am today, I'll make sure that that banner is sorted out. So you are embracing failure. You're almost thanking it for being there, for reminding you of the things that you need, need to do differently next time. So you don't keep you go coming back to that hard wire. Because um, my hard wire is let's do everything fast. Let's just move really quickly. Let's just get on that stream yard and get onto it and do it and da 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 da. It's not massively logical, it's not massively um, methodical, and it's not ma massively um, at a level of perfectionism because I'm not hardwired like that. I'm hardwired just to take fast action. And I have learned over the time the power of like being myself, obviously, and keep taking that fast action because that's who I am and brilliant, well done. But also learning those lessons and not seeing myself as a failure, but just seeing that as a lesson that next time actually I'm using StreamYard, which I've used about three times before my life, that there is, you know, a, some setting up things that need to be sorted out. So I really wanted to just jump on and talk about this, this perception we have that failure is a bad thing. And in summary, it's really to say that actually see failure as the tools that are showing you how you could do things better in the future. Never ever be afraid of failure because it will mean that you will not do those things in that way that didn't lead to the results you're looking for ever again. And it doesn't matter who, who you are in business, at some point, even when people generating multi-million pounds in their business, they still have things that don't work because the world changes really quickly. Consumers change really quickly. Formats change really quickly. So just think about moving that needle 1% every single day. Think about, you know, like taking action that's going to move you forward, that you're going to be so frigging proud of yourself for taking that action. And when you think like that, every single day, you are going to move the needle very rapidly in your business and without feeling as if you th throw yourself out of um, a aeroplane with a parachute on every day. So I just wanted to share three tips about how you can rethink failure. So number one is like recognize what failure is. Reframe it to being the lessons to your next level of success. Embrace mistakes, just like, you know, the child learning to walk. Know that you might have a few um, kind of times when things don't work out particularly well, 
but you know that eventually by being consistent and by being open to learning, you are going to achieve what it is that you're looking to achieve. So really understand and embrace and reframe what fear, uh, fear of failure is. The second thing is that for me personally, and something that I've seen work really well with my clients is that when we're looking to scale our business, when we're looking to grow our business, when we're looking to generate consistent months of high income, guess what? There isn't like a program, there isn't a uh, book, there isn't a coach who can guarantee that you're going to achieve those results by following a formula that goes A to Z. That is not possible because every single one of us is hardwired differently. So one of the things that I love to get my clients to do, and I do it for myself, is to anchor in such a compelling and exciting vision for like your life and your business, making it so compelling that you are you are prepared to to overcome any fear of failure so much so that you just keep on moving forward. Now, again, I'm not saying that like in a masking, like just smash through it and break through it and all the rest of it, because obviously you're, you're a feeling human being, but it's to just have this vision and to know that, that where you are right now is not a place you want to revisit in 12 months time. Hell, it's not even a place you want to revisit in six months time. Acknowledge that you are an evolving business owner and then you've got big, juicy, like allow yourself to have permission to have big, juicy goals and have that vision, hold that vision, like visit that vision, like have a vision board, have, like I have this little jar and it's got like um, affirmations in there or you can program them, program affirmations or reminders on your phone or have a Pinterest board or what use visualizations, whatever it takes to be really, really clear about what your vision is and keep moving forward towards it, regardless of any fear of failure. And the third step is to work on your mindset. Just as I said there is, yes, to have a vision, but work on your mindset. If you keep having the same sense of failure, the same fears coming up for yourself, what it's suggesting is that you've got something that is hardwired into your unconscious mind and your unconscious mind tells your conscious mind how you think and feel and therefore the actions that you are going to be taking on a daily basis. And it's it suggests that you need to do some deeper work. So yes, work on your mindset, but do the deep work as well to actually shift these things. And you've probably heard myself and lots of the like mindset experts say this to you, but really we're saying it for a reason is that you know, honestly, I used to have a fear of um, speaking to large groups of people. And don't get me wrong, when I run live events, I've got 20, 30 people sat in front of me, and they're all their eyes on me, and they've paid to be in that room with me, I still get butterflies, but I also embrace it, and I friggin' love it. And you can move from a real place of fear and a real place of fear of failure into embracing something that you never thought was possible for you and absolutely love it. And, and that's where we want to be, isn't it? To really program yourself for success. You know, create how you want to be, you know, what you want to be doing. If you want to be rocking up and doing lives like this, maybe a little bit more professionally like this, um, it, to your audience, like see yourself doing that in, in your mind's eye in the first place. And then it's going to be easier and easier for you to actually step into that. So, good one for us this week, isn't it? The overcoming that fear of failure. And I love that description in the dictionary that's as simple as a, a, a fear of the lack of success. And it's just like, wow, it's as simple as that, isn't it? And you've got to keep reminding yourself that everything you desire, everything you want is on the other side of your fear. And that's why I talk about moving your needle 1%. And on that note, I am so excited. And you guys are the first people to hear this as well, is that if you are ready 
to do that deep transformational work that I was talking about, if you understand that there are things that you keep hitting up against and you keep having the same ex kind of experience and that you have that same level of um, income and growth and, and it's frustrating you because you know that there's so much untapped potential within you, I've got the most amazing opportunity. Now, I always like to think about my clients and think about like what is the most powerful solution that I can actually bring for you guys. And I'm delighted that I've got a brand new program called Activate Your 5K Mindset. And within this four day program, I'm going to take you step by step to actually help you to move from where you are to where you want to be in terms of having the right mentality, the right energy, and the absolute right um, action taking for you to be able to generate consistent months of high income. So every single day it, we will be live, there will be recordings and you'll get that lifetime access to those recordings. But I will be delivering this every single um, day live where I will um, help and support you in the steps that you need to work on in order to step into that new wealth frequency. And we will also be undertaking the deep transformational work where you get to change how you are hardwired. So any of those limiting beliefs, any of the failure, fear of failure, any of those doubts, worries, we're going to be working on those so that you actually become wide open to receiving more clients, more level of success, more money. So why do I do this kind of program where it's just like four days? And it's because I understand that money actually likes fast action. So that you can start to take fast action in your business and start to get results immediately. I do not believe that you necessarily always have to be investing in a big program that's going to take a long period of time. I understand what the key components are that's going to help you transform how you think and feel around um, making more money. And I'm going to help you step into activating your 5K mindset. Now, you might be like, whoa, Rachel, I'm actually here to make a million. So 5K is not going to cut it, love. I get that, but let's get you to 5K first. Every stage that you go through, every time you generate some, you know, you want to hit your new income goal, there's, there's more mindset work to be done. And what I love to do and what I'm brilliant at doing is helping women to get to the 5K level. And by then, the way that you think and feel about your business and yourself is so different. And the way that you um, understand how your business it runs and how to scale it up becomes much, much easier for you to figure that out as well. So we'll leave the details. Obviously, I was hoping the details would be here, but do you know what? Technology is technology. I'll stick it in the comments below. Now, it's a four-day program. I'm not messing around with this. This is transformational work. You'll get me live. I'm going to be sharing NLP techniques, hypnosis that is going to change how you think and feel so that you can let go of your limiting beliefs around more success money clients. And I'm charging it at £37. So this is like a hell yes, I'm in. Let's not even worry about it. I'm going to work with Rachel for four days and transform how I think and feel so that I can earn more money. So I'll put the details in and I really want to encourage you to, if, you know, if, if you're like, oh my God, I know that I need to do this work. Even if you've done this work in the past, there's always time to do more work. So £37, pounds, four days, it's going to be amazing. I'll put the links below and I look forward. I'm so looking forward to running in. Okay, everybody, if you've got any questions about the programme or anything I've shared today, just pop it in the comments below. Bye for now.